Welcome to <laughs> welcome to <laughs> welcome to a visit with Nana and Papa. I'm Nana. I'm Papa. <laughs> My name is Valerie. And I'm Jim. And we're coming to you from Austin, Texas. And this is mostly about crafting on my side and who knows what he's going to get up to on his side. Whatever. And um, I'm going to start off with what I'm wearing. Can't see it very well. I'll put a picture in for sure with me wearing it. And then, um, oh, thank you for your yeah. help. So it is the Rocket Tea by Tannis Lavely. And... Um, could have just anyway yeah that's good and um i use a whole bunch of different yarns so i'm just gonna go through them starting at the top and working my way down it has long dog yarn is the green at the very top up here and then um i used a mini for this brown but i it was a random mini i have no idea what colors then it has uh, arctic crafts by benta and grab your drink Chromatic yarns, Hannah, Hannah, a corner of the crafts yarn is this one, but I don't remember the name of the colorway. And then this was uh, um, some more minis. And then down here, this is long dog yarn. And then these colors, this one and this one, I dyed them out of my aunt myself. And then the blue, and it's also on the edges, that is all dyed by Dells in his something navy somebody's navy and i found this picture here that he's showing you on the internet of a coral reef and attempted to do my best to recreate the colors and the layout of that photo in the form of a sweater and i think she did awesome i'm very proud of that sweater i didn't knit it but i'm very proud of her for that sweater thank you before I get into FOs, do you have anything you want to talk about? When mm. do I start my first FO? Go FO. Go FO. Okay, so my first finish Isn't object. Isn't that some kind of a website or something, Go FO? I don't know. Um, so this is the Hush Sweater. It is by Tin Can Knits. It's fully finished. Wheat ends woven in, which if anybody knows me, that in and of itself is pretty spectacular or amazing. Um... <laughs> It is very similar to the Love Note, and I have already knitted a second, uh, I knit another one, and I will probably make another one in a different color because it's a lot of fun to make. She was wearing it earlier. She looks very, very it's, good in that, but it's too, it's too hot. hot. It is way too hot. It's just too warm. It's so Good. some people are experiencing winter, a second winter, and some people are experiencing spring, 80 degrees. spring, and some of us are in the 80 degrees, and we don't need 80 degrees with thunderstorms, storms. possible tornadoes with hail, because you know, Cause you don't have to shovel hail, <laughs> generally. All right. so I'm going to just blow these, and then you tell me some stuff about some movies. Well, okay. no, oh. my, my H-E-B plug. If y'all don't have an H-E-B, I, I feel sorry for you. But if you do, every Sunday, H-E-B gives you something for free just for coming and shopping. You were going to go shopping anyway, but they'll give you something for free. Today, it is smoked tuna. I'll be putting that in salad. That's lemon and oregano. Yes, Yay. that's what I was thinking is my darling would like that. But H-E-B is the absolute best grocery store. It wins awards all the time. But you know what? It's only in Texas. Oh, in Northern Mexico. In Northern Mexico. One no, of the very it. few things that is actually wonderful about where we live is H-E-B. That was like when, when our daughter needed help and we were going to have to move down here for a year. That was like, well, and my wife said, do you have an H-E-B? Yeah, the H-E-B store products are awesome. They are absolutely as good, sometimes better than the name brand. So yeah, H-E-B. It go. It's at Henry E. Banks, but who cares? It's a great grocery store. All right, so oh. finish the schnee flocking. No, it's gory. It is finished. We're going to ship it out. Um, I thought about blocking it, but I realized that it can't. And this I made to go over it. And um, here, I'll just show you. Now I put the sweater on, but you can see what this is all about. 
This I made so that you could wear this sweater with or without it. The pattern had a turtleneck option and I thought, well, but what if you're not cold enough and you don't want all this? You want to be able to not have to have it, but still wear the sweater. And it is big enough that you can fold it down if you prefer that. I think it's genius. Um, you didn't hold the sweater up to it. I am sorry. There. So, then you See, get the... It, it the looks like it's actually a part of the sweater if you put it on right. It is awesome. I, it's very clever. Very clever. So, what I did is I just cast on... I used this US 7 and I did 92 stitches. And then I did 2x2 two two ribbing for about 3 inches. And then... Oh, it's two about by two three, inches. no, because it's this much, mm. and then it's this much and this much. Okay. See? So I did about three inches of the two by two, and then an inch and a half, inch and a quarter, whatever of two by three, and then the same in the three by three. And so, in other words, I added a purl stitch, and then I added a knit stitch, so where you ended up with three by three rib, and um. I will be making more of these because at the top of a sweater to be able to take it off and put it on when you go outside and you it's cold that's kind of cool and I definitely on helps making... on uh, when you're indoors because you come from 25 degrees outdoors to 75 degrees indoors you don't need the same shit yeah so I'm gonna try and make some of these for um, knit the rainbow because I'm trying to make things for Knit the Rainbow. Mm -hmm. They're a great organization. They provide um, knitted items for uh, trans and LGBT youth that are homeless in large cities. Yep. And I just think that's awesome. So this, I think, is a good choice. And it's a quick knit and a fun knit. So I'll make more. And um, the Schneeflocken and the, the cowl are... The green is Knit Picks Hawthorne in the color Conifer. And the um, white, or the not dyed, is just a undyed yarn that I had from when I used to sell dyed yarn a long time ago. And um, the sweater was, most of the body is in... US 5. The color work I knit mostly in US 6, but where it had like really dense stitches, then I went up to US 7, then back to US 6, and then the bot, the stockinette is all in US 5. And the ribbing on the cuffs and on the bottom is all in a US 3. That's it for that. <laughs> Okay, I just got back from seeing my mom and sister in Arizona. And I was there because my sister had a uh, cold, clear implant uh, replaced. And your mom. And my mom has dementia. So uh, I got to spend three weeks with my mom and my sister. And I got to help them get through a tight spot. And it was just a beautiful, wonderful visit. The only negative part of that visit was United Airlines. United sucks. They don't. Yes, they, they you do. You had a bad experience. I have lots of bad experiences with United. I have United. never had any bad experiences. You don't I fly as much as I do. It doesn't matter. I have had wonderful experiences That's with like them. I've never hit my finger with a hammer, but you've never driven in a nail. Or you've driven in two nails in your entire life. Well, I've never hit my no, finger with a that hammer. That is not a fair statement because I have flown from, with United since way years and years and years before I met you and I realized things change and I haven't flown lately so other than to go to Baltimore but my flight to Baltimore and back was on United and it was a beautiful wonderful flight there's a reason why there is a viral video out there called United Breaks Guitars and it shows the guys throwing this guy's guitar in yes, the luggage but, and they okay. destroyed a beautiful guitar but that's but, not what this is about this is about they can't even wait, get a flight out on pause, time pause yeah i do not think that your frustration with united is limited to the united airlines in watching the news all airlines are struggling to get flights out on time to make their connections to not have people stranded 
all of the airlines. So I just don't think that making a blanket statement that that United is the worst airline to fly or that they're horrible no, because you're they're right. not. You're it's right. all airlines are struggling and we don't know if it's they're struggling because they're not able to get the number of people they need to work. We don't know all the ins and outs. I am sorry that you had a bad experience, but I do not think you can make a blanket statement that all United flights are bad because that has not been my experience. Okay, I, I apologize, United. It was American Airlines. I just looked at my ticket stub. American Airlines. Those are the people who are... <laughs> now, I got moved. They were playing musical chairs on our flight because they needed to balance. They had so many fat people they were afraid the plane would tip over if they were all on the right side of the plane. So they're playing musical chairs, moving people around to get the weight distributed. My question is, how much do they? How do they know how much I weigh? Do they got one of those carnival weight guesters? Mm. Yeah, that looks like about two twenty-five to me. I didn't get on a scale. My luggage got on a scale. I didn't get on a scale. There was a woman behind me that made two of me. They had to wheel her in in a cart. She sat right beside me. I'm thinking they had to move three people to the other side of the plane because of us two. Because I am up 220, 222. And she was not. She was 350, 400. So right there in that little neck of the woods in those two seats, you got like 600 pounds. Anyway, anyway, I'm sorry that you had a bad flight, but I'm super glad that you made it home. I'm super glad I made it home because I got beautiful. And she hugged me and kissed me, and she got in traffic, and she hates traffic. She's usually very good and does not say a lot of bad words. You ought to hear this woman drive. <laughs> You'll have that. She was in the Air Force. I was the sailor. She could have been in the Navy. <laughs> this is true. I do. This is definitely going to be forever a sweary friendly podcast. If bad words are not your jam, we're probably not your jam. I don't say them all the time, but, but bad try words will come out of this mouth, especially when knitting. Back uh, many, many years ago, I wrote a song that says, it was called I Write Songs with Dirty Words. And it was very popular and very funny. Anyway. Anyway. Are we done? Can we move on to next? We can move on. You can put up your next sweater. This one I finished today. And the ends are woven in everything. Or did I finish it last night? Uh, I think I finished, finished it last it? night. No, you finished it this morning because when I came out, you no. showed me the sleeve. You weren't quite oh, finished I had with it, it last night. I had it finished, but I didn't have the ends woven in. But I wove in all the ends. Everything's and that, finished. Trust me, that is amazing. We have several sweaters that she wears every week that still don't have the ends woven in that's because i would drive my ends, ass crazy all this little tickly things on the inside and nobody can see i, know, I can okay. feel it i don't care what people can see i can feel that little tickly thing that's like no so it's not happening i talked about this on my last podcast but just in case you didn't know this is the hush sweater by tin can knits if you've knit the love note it's a very similar construction same gauge but instead of lace, it has this beautiful cable detail, which looks complicated, but it's incredibly easy to knit. So, um, yeah, I this there will be more of these, but what I'm thinking I'm going to do my next one is go down in gauge, and I'm going to knit it just in fingering weight, um, not super wash. I have the yarn already. So. My love, what uh, might be super easy to you, the uh, born with knitting needles in her fingers, may not be so easy for somebody else that can't walk through a grocery I'm store and that, knit while they shop. I'm just saying that a lot of cables are complicated and they're going this way and that way and this way and that way. In this particular cable sweater, the cables are, there's only one every so often and they're all going the same cable, you know, direction. You're not having to go back and forth and back and forth. Now, so it looks more complicated than it is. Valerie does not do well in crowds. Therefore, she does not do well shopping. So when we shop, I drive, I push the cart, I get the shit, and she walks and she knits. And she goes and picks up stuff and throws it in the cart. And she knits and she knits. And people stop her and like, that's amazing. You can knit and walk? Yeah. That's just her normal. And everybody else is freaking out. So 
when she says, this is easy, just as an experiment, go outside your house where you have distractions and people and cars and whatnot, and then walk down to the end of the block and back and knit. And then when you get back, look at that swatch and see what you have made. It's not that it's that it, just it takes is practice. It's not that miraculous. Anybody can do that. They just have to practice. You know, anybody could paint the Mona Lisa, but the only one person no, did. No, I don't think that that's different. I'm not no. a perfect knitter by any stretch of the imagination. No. I don't worry about mistakes. Mistakes happen. They're supposed to happen. So I just, but I don't, I don't think everyone can knit without looking. But I do think that if you know how to knit, you can learn to knit without looking at your knitting. Yes, love. Anyhow, moving on. Did you have a book or a movie or okay. something? Well, we're going to start off with the books with something. Okay. I have read this series two or three times. I don't remember. When I don't like whatever is currently available for reading, my favorite authors have been lazy this year and just haven't kicked out of thinking. But understand, I read two to three books a week. Sure. So, uh, one of my favorite authors was pointed out to me by her, but she didn't discover this author. The boys at Needles at the Ready discovered this author, and they told her about it. And then she told me, well, she started reading the book. She says, I think you'd really like these books. So, the next time I was between reads, I started reading book one of The Iron Druid, written by Kevin Hearn. Kevin Hearn is amazing. If you haven't read any of his stuff, start with The Iron Druid. Work your way all the way through The Iron Druid, and then read the first two books of Ink and Siegel. And then you should be ready when he's working on the third book for Ink and Siegel. So by the time you get all those 13 books read, you should be ready for the new book. Read slow. <laughs> Give Kevin time to write and get it proofread. And Kevin actually has real editors as opposed to a lot of these indies. And these real editors edit English. The editors on the independents, I'm not sure what language they are editing, but it's not English. Anyway, Kevin Hearn introduced to us by the boys at Needles at the Ready and give them a view. They're pretty cool. Uh, but absolutely... Start reading Kevin Hearn. I will agree. And Kevin, One of my favorite books are that the series. Okay. He has a talking dog. Get over it. It's magic. Uh, the druid. He's so good. The druid has spent many years teaching this dog to talk Jealous in his happy. mind. He does. The dog doesn't mouth and talk. The dog talks with his mind. But the dog is very old and he's been trained for a very long time by somebody who uses magic. His name is Oberon. And Oberon is the comedy relief in all of these books. And Oberon is hilarious. Uh, you get a little a little tweak into Kevin Hearn's mind every time Oberon opens his mouth. It's brilliant. Just brilliant it's just, writing, brilliant story. Read the first book, The Iron Druid, and uh, if you don't like it, don't bother with it. If you do like it, you may have discovered your new jam that isn't fig. She likes fig jam. I like Fig Newtons. I'm not a fan of Fig Jam. Yes, you know but the what? Fig, fig jam, jam goes in Fig Newtons. Go figure. The Fig Jam I like doesn't I go have figure, figure. any ah. sugar in it other than natural sugars. It uses fig and natural juices oh to my turn it God. into. And so Just I can have it on my diet. While he disappears for a moment, I'm going to bring up my last two finished objects. These are pot holders. Thanks to Aaron and Chip over at Fiber Hustle. They did the dishcloth resolution. Um, I didn't knit mine. I crocheted them and I didn't use a pattern. I just picked up a hook. I did make these using Knit Picks Shine Sport in the the color is Green Apple. And this is a sport weight, 60% Pima cotton, 40% modal. And I think it's super soft and I like it working is. with it. It is an absolute waste to make 
a dishcloth, a washcloth to wash you. Yes, but yes, this could go but in a washcloth shower. to wash. Use that itchy scratchy shit you buy and make that into the dishcloth. They need something that's abrasive. That is for washing your face and your well, you body. Well, you could you could use it in the shower. It'll be shower that, dish washcloth. That oh, you're being so gentle to your hands while you're washing dishes. That'll be your washcloth in the shower. Yes, How's dear. That? That's good. Very okay. nice. Very soft. And um, I will I I will tell more, but. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Erin and Chip, for getting me back on my hooks. Now, back to where we were before that little segue. She's trying to make me eat healthy. And she's talking about, oh, this big jam's got nothing that makes it taste good in it. Right, okay. Well, she bought me this because I like hazelnut and chocolate. Yes, y'all know the other name for that. Uh-huh. And she bought me this hazelnut chocolate spread. With half the sugar. This is such bitter shit. It is like drinking skunky <laughs> beer. It will make you pucker. Even if you're looking at Roseanne Barr. You will still pucker. It is wow. But. I'm eating it. Because she wants me to be healthy. And I want to be healthy. And I want to spend a long time. I want to spend the rest of my life with her. But I don't want it to be over tomorrow. You know. So I got to change my ways. But this, this is not the way to change. I'm eating it because we bought it. God help her if she ever buys another one. Because I'm eating it because I love her. I was trying to be helpful and get I you know. something that you would like. What would it be horrible See, for you? That's because you have this big, beautiful, wonderful heart. You, you have the biggest, most wonderful heart of anybody I know. And then you punish me. I was not trying to punish With this you. garbage. And you don't have to eat it. I have and to eat it because I'm not going to throw away. There are starving kids in Africa. You know how many times I heard about there's starving kids in Africa? You have to eat it. You can mix it with something. You can find ways to work around it anyway. I got, I got we, mouth smacked because my mom said there were starving kids yeah, in Africa because of them damn Brussels I, sprouts. I'm not your and mother. I, and I I'm said, not feeding you. Give mine to them. Pop, I got smacked in the mouth, and then I got to eat my ass out nasty Brussels sprouts. I'm not your mother, and I'm not feeding you Brussels sprouts. You couldn't feed me. I love you, but I am not eating Brussels sprouts. <laughs> they suck. Anyway. Anyway. So, oh, that's all of my whips. So, uh, I, I mean, all of my finished objects. You, no, okay. No, it's it, all my yeah. finished objects. Because you got sock whips here. I love, so, I got lots all, of you, whips. You, uh, lots and lots of whips. Let's talk about this one because it's in front of me. Oh, that's a beautiful one. This is the Anchor Tea by Petite Knit. And I had finished it. It was an FO. But I found that it fit wasn't... I didn't like the fit. So I ripped it back to the sleeves and I have been re-knitting it. So I don't know when I will finish it. Not very fast if I keep doing what I just did and drop all the dang <laughs> stitches off there of it. But, um... Yeah, that, that makes it a lot slower to knit when you. Oh man! Whip when it. she was taking the um, schneep locking and getting ready to work on the collar, I don't know what she did, but she did something it that was very it bad. dropped stitches like rows and rows and rows down. It took her three hours. Yep, it did. To get the schneep locking back to where she could put it on the needles. Those were not three hours of Valerie has very good language. Those no, were, they those were, were not. three hours of. <laughs> uh, she sounded like a golfer. <laughs> you know, you ever good. wonder why they call the game golf? Because they use so many other four letter words when they're playing it, but none of them are golf. I think they should have called the game shit. That's oh. what I hear the most on a golf course. This is um, knit with. Ted Knits UK yarn in his Merino 4-ply, and the colorway is uh, seashells. Now, if you have ever lived on a, a, a beach state where you could go and walk the beach before everybody else and buy the seashells, that looks so much like a seashell. That, that is one that somebody actually nailed when they gave it a name. That was a very good name. But I like Ted Knits. He's got really good stuff. Yeah, I'm, I love his yarn. Can um, I do other one? Huh? Yeah. So I this is a twist and turns shawl original, and I knit. I was at this point on the Clue one when Clue two came out, and I looked at Clue two and went, 
I love clear one. I do not like lines going in different directions. That's not my jam. So I'm like, what am I going to do? Big jam is her jam. And so I decided, wait, this could almost make a yoke, a circular yoke. So I cast on number two. And this doesn't get a lot of love, I must admit. I'm not... Um, I, I have been really, really focused on getting that Shani flocking done. But this is probably going to be my number one focus for the next few weeks, That's, months. See, this this one, look at this. None of these has the, the holes or anything. This is going to have to be the front because this one, you don't really want to wear that in the no, front because things might happen. <laughs> because I haven't put the loops through the loop yet. Uh -huh. See, you just pull the loops up through the loops See, and then they go away. Been, this loop has been looped. Yeah, but not all the way up. As soon okay. as I, if I undo the loops here, I'll tell you. No, that. don't undo the loops here. Now they're all out. That's how you knit it. And then you pull it up. I just wanted to make sure I was doing it right. And so I pulled some of them up. When yeah. it's all you, done, you want to make sure up. you pull all of them up. Otherwise, you're going to be playing peekaboo. Anyway, so Anyways. I am going to finish this to be the same as this. And then I'm going to add a pink cable between them that is going to run here and then when I get it to knit to where they're all the same length then I will join in the round and what color are you going to put in the middle to, to bind them pink that's a lot of pink what here just in no. this stripe here no you got to put something down here to bind the whole body together that's the body so no because when I get so when I get here I'm going to join in the round, and the body will be in this color here, this lighter color. Oh. The whole body, just the body, knit in the round, knit, okay. knit in stockinette. Um, but the going down the stripe of the sleeve will be the pink. Okay. Um, the colors in here, the dark color is Moondrake for Ply Merino. And it is her colorway spruce, which is a dark teal green. I'm a Merino fan myself. And Superwash Merino. <laughs> he does. He loves Superwash Merino. And then the um, other colors that are going to be used, both the light aqua light color and the um, pink are BFL nylon that I dyed myself. So, nothing fancy schmancies there. And um, this one is going to take a while. This one, if I finish it this year, I will be amazed. It probably won't come back in the showing you where we're at until I've actually split for sleeves and it has the, the sides done. And then I'll probably show you when I finish the sleeve. And then I'll show you again when I finish the body, but I'm not going to bring it every week to show you where we're at on it. Okay. And you have another books or movie or something you want to mention? Well, okay. While I was in Arizona with my sister and my mom, uh, Peg never gets to watch movies because mom don't like movies. But while I was there, Mama would focus on drawing pictures while Peg and I watched movies. Or sometimes Mama would watch the movie a little bit, and if it wasn't her cup of tea, she'd go back to drawing. So Peg has discovered that if she ha lets Mom draw during the movie, other than Mom interrupting her every once in a while, she can watch a movie as long as it's not uh, too bad of a movie. Now, Peg and I have different ideas on what violence is. To me, John Wick are violent movies. I love them. There's a new one coming out. Probably the last one. Ah, uh, sadness. But she could not handle John Wick. I told her these movies weren't violent. We watched Bullet Train. And she looked at me and constantly asked me throughout the movie, because it's a kind of a mystery, but it's also violent. You said this wasn't violent. It's not. He just stabbed somebody. How is that not violent? Said, well, he didn't violently stab him. I only stabbed him once. My sister's idea of violence and my idea of violence are different. And 
She does not like my the idea of violence. The entire world ver version of violence and your version of violence are different. <laughs> yes, dear. Anyway. But while we were watching movies, uh, we found out Bullet Train? No. She said if there is a Bullet Train too, she won't watch it. But she got to watch movies. See, my loving wife will not watch certain movies with me. She don't like them. She does not like uh, murder mystery movies. Can't get her to watch it. Beautiful movies that she has missed out on because she don't, don't like them. Uh, but she did watch Enola Holmes, so I'll give her that. She liked Enola Holmes. If you have not checked out Enola Holmes, that is an absolutely lovely time of enjoyment. It, and Enola Holmes 1 did so well, they made a second one. I love both of them. And they are both great watches. I believe they're on Amazon or are they on Netflix? I don't, I don't know. Remember. I just remember that we watched them. Uh, you signed up for Netflix, so now I can't keep track of They've got two well. of my favorite actors in them. One of them is uh, Helen Bonham Carter, and she plays Mama Holmes. And the other one is uh, so good. Henry Cavill, and he plays Sherlock Holmes. And it is such a wonderful change from the other roles that he has played. Uh, it's actually one of my favorite roles to see him in, besides Witcher. I really like Witcher. Uh, until they completely just forgot what they were making the show about. And I think that's why he left. But anyway, uh, she liked uh, Enola Holmes. Valerie liked Enola Holmes. My sister liked Enola Holmes 1 and 2. She thought they were really good. She'd watch a third one. Uh, then we watched, I introduced her to Egg at the Mystery, uh, Murder on the Orient Express, and Murder on the Nile. She liked both of those. And I introduced her to Knives uh, Out, and uh, Glass Onion, the, the sequel to Knives Out. And she liked both of them. They were a little bit violent, but uh, she still liked them. And was they had a nice, intriguing mystery, so she really enjoyed those movies. So we know what kind of movies we can watch together or what I can recommend to her. I, I won't be recommending Bullet Train. Oh, we also watched um, Lost City. And she won't watch Lost City because she don't like Indiana Jones type movies. Yep. Lost City is basically uh, a tongue-in-cheek spoof on other Indiana Jones type movies. Because the book, the, the story is about a book author. And it's, she's, the, the opening scene is straight out of Indiana Jones. It's her and the hero tied up in a temple surrounded by snakes. And then they start having a dialogue about, where did all these snakes come from? Do they live here? What do they eat? Does, how come they're not biting him? Do they just not bite the bad guys? They only bite the good guys? And she starts with that. Okay, none of this makes sense. Delete, 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 delete. And she whittles down the scene until she got nothing. And that's the opening scene. So that really sets the mood and tells you, this is not a serious movie. And... You have to have a, a level of tolerance for stupidity or you won't be able to watch this movie because it gets dipped in stupid quite often. And then they shake it out and fling it on you. So, Lost City is not for everybody, but it's a humorous watch the first time. Having watched it twice now, three times now, because uh, I watched it twice at the theater and once with my sister, the third time around, it was not as good as either the first time or the second time. The second time around is still pretty funny. A lot of, lots of lots of throwback jokes and uh, what they call Easter eggs. Uh, watch it and look for them, and you'll you'll find all kinds of things from the seventies, eighties, nineties that you go. <laughs> I know that. I know that. But uh, definitely not a, a serious movie, and not all that good of a movie more than once. But watch it once. It's okay once. I wouldn't go twice. Back to your Arnie shit. Okay. Um, so whips. Oh, I'm I'm knitting while he's talking. And so this the one is another <laughs> another um whip. It's a tube by um Aquila from the Lefty Knitter podcast. Her uh, Etsy shop is Knitty Bow Fibers on Etsy, and she cranks tubes. So you send her your skein of yarn, and she'll send it back in tubes. I did cut this tube into two so that I can make two long socks and um, I have the heel is completed in I've added the, I'm adding the toe and um, 
the yarn for the the heel and the toe I'm using I I'm so sorry but um somebody may remember and be able to tell me but I haven't seen her on YouTube in a long while but it is a knitter who also um, has some designs on Ravelry and she was selling this yarn to raise money for her family in Oh, why is it not coming to me? Russia invaded Ukraine. Ukraine. Thank you. Her family's from Ukraine. Um, she is married and living in Holland now, but um, she was trying to raise money for um, the folks back home. And so I bought the yarn. I love it. It's super bright and cheerful. And so um, I also have another. This is socks. Well, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, because while we're talking about Aquila, last her last podcast. Wait, wait, let me finish the Aquila. These are also tube. Was also a tube. This was a fifty gram tube that she um, caked up for me. This came from. I don't remember the name of the dyer, but they're from uh, Canada, and they do really good self striping yarn. Now go ahead. Okay. Now, if you, I, I wholeheartedly recommend you use Aquila to, to do your tubes because that cuts down on a lot of Mrs. Weasley knitting. <laughs> oh, my God. That's why she used magic. Because she, it was too damn boring to do by a not magic. She just, let's, go do that. And she did something else. But she's basically your Mrs. Weasley. She'll make the whole tube for you, and you don't have to knit that. And when you want to order your yarn, instead of having the yarn come to you, have the yarn go to Aquila and save yourself some shipping because why ship it to you and then you ship it to Aquila? Just have them ship it to Aquila and tell her it's coming and she'll know what to do with it. Crank, 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 crank. Now, Valerie's last pod podcast, she mentioned this beautiful little girl named Hazel. And Hazel made her a gift and she told everybody about it. But she didn't show anybody the gift. This is the gift. It says B kind and it was painted by hazel for valerie thank you very much hazel now could you paint one for congress just <laughs> just paint another one and send it to congress and make sure they all have to look at it and every day they need to look at that and read the words be kind because congress could use some kindness that's true that and hazel good job I love it, little girl. I love it so, 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 so much. Um, so my next, um, or do you want to do a book or a movie or a something? Uh, or go to the next one? While I was going through the word search on uh, Netflix looking for Knives Out, I found my new watch. It's called Knife and Death. Anybody that's a fan of Forged in Fire, where they take blacksmiths, they come in, give them garbage, and make them make a knife out of it, and then they try their best to destroy their knife in testing, that's Forged in Fire. This is basically the testing phase of Forged in Fire, only they have an, a, an obstacle course like Gladiator, and you and your knife have to run through this course hack and slash and breaking stuff, preferably not your blade. This course is so tough. That when we started watching it, it was two episodes before anybody actually finished the course. It's not easy. And they're hard on blades. But uh, if you like the forged and fired blade testing, you will really like uh, Knife and Death. Uh, it's, you get into it, you're, you're rooting for the guy you want, that, or the girl. There's ladies that do this too. You're rooting for them to do well, and you really feel bad for them when they get killed by the fish. Watch it, and you'll know what I'm talking about. The first see, the first show, nobody made it past the fish. They had to cut a fish in half. Their mama had to have dropped them on the head as a baby, because if you got to cut a fish in half, and you got to swing a knife at it, you need to hit it on the spine first. Because there's bones and shit there that it's going to be hard to cut through. So you want the maximum amount of your power at the spine so you can cut through that. And when you get down to the belly where it's just flab, like me, yeah, it slices right through that. 
you start the other way and that belly just ooh, holds your knife back and when you get to the spine you've done dissipated all your energy and you don't cut the fish and you get disqualified so sorry gave away part of the game but watch it you if you like the testing in forged and fire you'll like knife and death back to you thank you baby okay so my next <gasps> she's crocheting yeah just at the moment so my next i don't think i talked about this one this is nope. another sweater tennis lavalle did this pattern and it also this pattern this is going to be the floodlight tea i will i don't know if i'll be able to but if i can i'll put a photo up somewhere here showing you the floodlight tea but if not I'm sorry, it'll be linked below. It is a super cute um, t-shirt, and I'm excited. I am striping with this, uh, I'm gonna do large stripes with this color and the thin stripes with the green, and through the whole sweater. And it's using Pulse Garn Coast, which is 55% lamb's wool and 45% cotton. And the um, it comes in 383 yards per 50 grams. And if you get it in the U.S., the price varies. Um, if you order it directly from Holst, it's like three something per 50 grams, three dollars and something. Plus, you do have to pay shipping, so keep that in mind. Hey, when you do the shipping, my wife, because she's clever, goes and she starts stacking shit. Until the shipping changes. Yeah. And then she takes the last thing that she didn't really want that much anyway. Off. Because if you're going to pay $30 in shipping. Whether you get one skein of yarn. Or whether you get five skeins of yarn. Maximize your shipping. Because you know what? Sooner or later you're going to buy more yarn. Might as well buy all five now. And it's called saving your money until you have them. You just you don't go crazy. But when you have saved all the money you need to get your five skeins of yarn, go crazy. Get your five skeins of yarn. Save on your shipping. Yeah. So um, the other yarn that I'm using is Oops, this kind of green. A... I was tangled because I'm like that. Um, <laughs> I love you. This green came in a... Like, you can get it way cheaper because we have all these bits and bobs from remnants from cakes and cones that they were making. And they had packaged it up in a 200 gram bag. So, but it came in literally bigger chunks and littler chunks and a whole bunch of them all in one bag. Now, did you actually get to see the contents or is it just like a guesswork? It's you, a grab bag, you're going to no, get what you, you get. It lets you choose the color and the yarn, so you can say it'll. T it doesn't show you how, what size the bits and bobs are, but it tells you, hey, we have this bag of coast in this green, or we have a bag of this host super soft in this pink. Okay. So you know what you're getting. You just don't know how many little bits and bobs will be in the bag. Yeah. And since I like doing stripes and I love doing color work and stuff, it doesn't matter that it comes in these bits and bobs, and I can save by doing that. So that made me very happy. Um, anyhow, so this is probably going to take me a bit, but it is cotton, or it has a lot of cotton in it. So my goal is to make one and to see if I do better with the cotton here in Texas. Because right now, my wool t-shirts keep me cooler than store-bought cotton. Store-bought shirts make me a lot hotter, so this I like the wool. is the first non-wool shirt I've had on in a year. Probably, yeah. Well, not the first. I, I My wool shirts are not fit for special occasions because they're not dressy. They're just wool tees or a long-sleeve wool tees from... Uh, I don't remember Wooly the name of it. or something. something like that? No, no that's the yarn Wooly show. Wooly clothing, I think is what it's called. But uh, I, I bought them when they were on sale. They're not cheap, but uh, I am telling you right now, wool is the way to go. Uh, wool does not gather up body odor. So if you change your shirt every day, 
and leave it, leave it hang, and you have at least uh, three shirts, by the time you get back to shirt A, it's, it doesn't smell. It's clean. Don't spill your stuff on you. Don't splatter your stuff on you when you eat. Don't wipe stuff on you and don't cook. Yeah, do not, do cook. not wear it when you're doing anything with flour or when you're whisking eggs. Because you, what you will find out if you pay attention is sometimes when you are whisking vigorously, some of the egg splatters on your shirt. This is true. And it makes you very unhappy if it gets on your wool shirt because uh, sheep and chickens don't get along. So on the whole... St coast on that sweater i just want to quickly state um i don't know the color of the green anymore but it's definitely a color they don't offer it right now um they do have lots of greens and they're beautiful but that particular shade they don't have but this is verity and it still is a valid color and that's showing up pretty true to form wouldn't you say babe yeah a little uh, it's a tad bit brighter if you get the angle of the sun wrong but yeah it's pretty close I think if you hold it up close to get the sun, not a factor in it. No, that's too dark. Eh. Let's pull it back by you. Let's throw it back by you. That's more accurate. Against the black shirt, you give it much more. Even though your shirt looks in teal, but it's actually black. My shirt does not look teal. It does to me. It looks like it has a green to it. Anyway. Huh. It's and, good. and they let you be in electronics in the Air Force. <laughs> that explains why the Air Force has planes that crash a lot. Their, their electronic technicians are colorblind. No, it just looks like it's a super dark teal green instead of just an all black black. It's fine. It's no big deal. It, well, it does have striping. You got, it got color variations, so we'll give you some slack. It's not a solid black. Anyways, so do you have something else? Because my next is um, is this. Well, okay, back to American Airlines and my horrors with the airlines and you being all forgiving. I walked 4.2 miles in an airport Wednesday. The previous Wednesday, I had walked 1.4 miles. The previous Wednesday, I had walked... 1.1 miles and the previous Wednesday I was in an airport in Dallas and don't ever fly through Dallas if you can afford it oh my god is that place designed by clowns I walked 2.6 miles and I had to take a tram for another four miles they got that thing somebody got a deal on land when they bought the land for the airport in Dallas because they got that thing is spread out all oh over the place if you got so much room between shit you got to make your own monorail well, that's, that's a, crazy that's, they, they yeah, do that yeah, at denver yeah, that, that denver yeah, denver yeah, international yeah. you look at that coming in from the air and it looks like a circus that is right it is a circus it's run by clowns dia dumb ass international yes. anyway anyway so i wound up walking 4.2 miles and thursday Thursday, I could hardly get out of bed and move. My legs hurt so bad. I that barely made need, it to my plane. But my that's legs just because so you bad. need more exercise. You need more I need miles. more exercise gradually, not just I'm dump just my saying, ass from 1.4 to 4.2. We, we need to do two miles every day, and then the 4.2 won't be so bad. My, I, I needed oxygen. My emphysema about had my ass passed out somewhere <laughs> about four. Well, I'm glad that you made it home safe and sound. Me too. Okay. This is my last, I'm pretty sure this is my last. Are we talking last... about Fiber Hustle? I don't remember you talking about Fiber yeah, Hustle. I'm talking about them again now, okay. but yes. So the Fiber Hustles did their dishcloth revolution, and I decided to crochet my dishcloth. And I used to crochet a lot. In fact, I have lots of friends who are still avid crocheters, and I haven't crocheted that much in a really long time. And so it inspired me to pick up crochet, and so I am making a... Fit me cowl. I will link the pattern below, and it's designed by Liz, who is one half of Cocktail Hours at the Coop. Coop, and her and her sister's family own Arrow Acres, Arrow Acres Farm. They raise alpacas, and uh, she designed this pattern, and it is actually a a treat to crochet. 
So I'm super excited. The yarn I'm using is more Knit Picks because, you know, it's Knit Picks. And it is Knit Picks Stroll in their gradients. And one of the gradients is FOMO gradient. And one of them is Multiverse gradient. And I put them together. And um, the inside is what I started with. And it's going to go from uh, like a navy blue into a teal and aqua into this um, like lighter blue with the yellow. And then the yellow turns into more of a gold with some lavender and then the lavender into a purple with the pink. So I won't use this whole cake by any stretch of the imagination, but I wanted to knit this up and who knows, maybe I'll make more than one of them because it is, it had, I cast it on this morning and um, it's been a lot of fun. So I do see um, more crochet in my future. So maybe, um, because it hasn't hurt, as long as I don't crochet for too many hours in a day, my hands are not cramping and that makes me happy. So thank you Liz for awesome pattern. And that is the last of my current whips. Um, did you have more that you wanted you to? You forgot. Oh, I haven't gotten there. Oh, okay. We were, we were talking whips. Okay. Now, okay, book and TV. Uh, oh my god 2013 I think it was maybe 2012 I don't remember uh, a long long time ago my wife bought me a book and yeah you bought me lots of books but it was by <laughs> a new author that neither one of us had heard about only it wasn't that new because he had like four books at the time and she bought me this book, and it's called Kill Shot. She said, I think you'll like this, because she read the jacket on it and bought it for me. It's by some guy called Lee Child. Turns out, Lee Child is awesome. I love it. It's a Reacher book. And she's read all of them. I read all of them. And she says, you're my Reacher. And I said, what? She says, Reacher, you, you are, you're my Reacher. You remind me so much of Reacher. You're just not six foot five and 250 pounds. I'm still not six foot five, but I am getting closer to the 250 pounds. Uh, totally different. Uh, uh, just saying totally different alignment in where those 250 <laughs> yes, they pounds are. are. Yes, they are. Bye. But uh, so I started reaching the, reading the uh, Reacher books by Lee Child. And I loved them. They're great books. I've read every single one of them. Even his little short novelettes uh, talking about Reacher's childhood. They made a couple of movies, and they used Tom I Cruise. I like the TV show. And Tom Cruise is five foot something. He's short. He's actually very short, especially compared to most of the people he acts with. So it's all camera angles to make him not look like a midget. He's not six foot four, 250 pounds. My wife thought that he did a good job on the attitude of Reacher, but Reacher's not just attitude. People look at Reacher and what they go, no. Yeah, but the new guy that's in the show is good. Oh, Adam Rich, so I believe good. is his name. Uh, there Amazon. More of those. They're, they're making more. Amazon bought the rights from Lee Childs to make a TV series out of his book. And Whoops. they used his first book for the first season. And their plan is to do a book per season. Well, They've got 26 books to choose from, so plenty of material. But Lee Child is no longer writing those books. A few years ago, Lee Child said, I am tired. I want to kill a Reacher. And his faithful reader fan base said, you want a what? He said, well, uh, I was thinking about putting him in a no-win situation that he couldn't get out of and killing him. Because I'm tired of writing about him. And his brother, Andrew, said, all right. Said, what? Said, I'll write them. So him and Andrew wrote a couple of books together. And now I think Andrew's doing all the writing. And Lee's just going along with it because he gets half the money. <laughs> now, I'm not sure how their financial deal works out. But Andrew Child is now doing the bulk of the writing and... 
still good stuff, still good stuff. I still like Reacher. But the TV show Amazon did. It's so good. It's the so first good. time I have seen a book adaptation where the person making them show actually read the book. And it uh, follows the book follows very, the very book closely. So close. It's got a few, you know, technical license, whatever, where they, oh, we wander off over here a little bit. But most of the time, they are straight on the book. It's great. It's so good. If you have Amazon, check out the Reacher series. There's only like 10 episodes, but they are really, really good. good episodes. And they, they, there's violence in them, and there's a teeny, tiny amount of nudity in them. So, not every scene, not every show, but there is uh, a lot of, there's a lot of violence sprinkled around, but there's only one time that there's any nudity. So, other than that, you're all right. Uh, close your eyes. <laughs> you're funny. Um, I don't have anything else, here, you know, to show. You do. Necessary. Oh, I do. I want to talk about podcasts. Yes, that's good. And so, I watch a lot of podcasts, and I just... I love when other podcasts tell about another podcast. Like then you can find a new somebody new. And so Leslie this week from oh yeah from um, not quite enough yarn, <laughs> which um, yeah. yeah she's, she's one of my favorite you. humans on the no is she that no it's true she does it because even though she has plenty of yarn she does not necessarily have enough yarn for she's, one she's, project so she has to. Make choices like I did with this sweater. I could have made it all in one color, but instead I made it in lots of colors, and I think it's really cool. And she does. She's one. Of, she's one of those people who thinks she never has quite enough yarn. I know another person that is very similar to that. There's, it's just like when you always, want to make something, there's but, always oh, but I don't have that to do this. You like, don't have to have a need to make something. You come and show me. Oh, look at this, and it really is very nice looking yarn. It's very beautiful colorway it's 28 dollars a skein and she hasn't got a clue what she's going to make out of it but isn't this beautiful and yeah you don't need it well i don't need it but i may want it and i said well we aren't buying wants today anyway. and she goes hey, 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 hey. and then she goes back and comes back with another one look at this one that purple and it's beautiful it is beautiful what are you going to make with it I don't know. Then you don't need it. Once again, we are being caught between the rock of need and the rock of want. And what happens between the two rocks? I lose. Something gets smashed. Anyway, so Leslie was very, very kind. She was. And Leslie she, is a sweetheart. She mentioned my podcast, which a lot of people came, and that was so nice. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Leslie. We watch Leslie every Friday. Yeah, we don't. I don't miss Leslie. And what's funny is if he doesn't hear it because maybe I had headphones on or had it quiet, what happened to Leslie? Did you not watch? Where's Leslie? Yeah, oh, he always checks. You got to go back and listen to the back episodes to her Christmas vlog. One of the things that Leslie and I have in common is we tend to do a Weird Al Yankovic to songs. Yes, that's a great song. Uh, we hear a song and we just hear alternate lyrics so we help them out and she has several Christmas carols during her Christmas vlog in which she has the tune but she has her own words to the tune and they're epically and, awesome and they're, they're really good so give Leslie a listen she doesn't have a bad voice at all but she has very witty alternative lyrics and they're clean there's nothing nasty in there they're just alternative lyrics uh you're delight I, I think you'll like it if you don't like it don't watch it see that's what america is missing out on you have the ultimate act of censorship you don't like it don't watch it but leave it alone for the people who do like it yeah me so, uh i don't like watching shows about picking your nose but if somebody out there makes a show about picking your nose, they can make it. I don't have to watch it. This is true. There might be somebody weird that <laughs> wants to watch it. They got nothing better to do with their life than sit in front of a computer and watch somebody else pick their nose. If that's them, knock yourself out. Go sit there on that booger fest for hours. I don't care. I'm no. not watching. Anyway. Now back to you. <laughs> so, <laughs> in the realm of podcasts... 
Um, I also watch Barbara from Clayman Fiber. And Barbara, very I, good friend of ours now. She started out as somebody we didn't know at all, but over the years of uh, watching her and Valerie sending messages and sending her moral support, and they have become very good friends. So that's a beautiful thing about this podcast thing is you're, she lives in Baltimore. No, she lives in, well, in Pennsylvania. She lives in Pennsylvania. That's a long ass way away from Austin, Texas. But how how it beautiful is it that you have this beautiful friendship with somebody awesome. so far away, and she actually got to meet her. I know it was so good because she uh, saved up her pennies and uh, uh, actually said no to a scanty yarn every now and then. Oh, holy fuck! That. But <laughs> saved up her pennies and she went to Baltimore Sheep and Wool. Wasn't that what it Maryland was? Sheep Maryland Wool. Sheep and Wool. Outside and, the book. At, and while she was at War Maryland Sheep and Wool, she got to meet Barbara in person. So and Chevis. Oh, well, we haven't talked about Chevis. Yes, Chevis is awesome. I, but I met Barbara through Chevis because Chevis did, on the right when we went into lockdown, she decided to do a Zoom. And I got to go on that Zoom. And on that Zoom, I met Leslie and I met Benta from Arctic Crafts by Benta. And I, I thought met, we met Leslie through Barbara. Mm -mm. All uh, through, all of them were from were for through that Zoom grab you with drink. with grab, yeah, all because of Chevis. Yeah, I watch she, Okay, Chevis, kind of like us. Chevy Rail is Chevy on Rail. YouTube. She she uses some words that are actually you now in the dictionary because they're used so much, but polite society doesn't like them. My personal opinion, there are no bad words. Uh, it depends on how you use it. Yeah. I love, I love, love, love her podcast. But Chevis is, Chevis is a lot of fun. I got to meet them. And um, anyway, so on her, on Flame and Fiber, she did a Ode to Joy last year, Knit Along. And I participated throughout the year. And I won a cup, which is a really cool cup. And it's all about knitting, except right here and that camera's over there and this says crochet stitch symbols on a knitting knowledge cup but that's because the person that made that is like so many people in the world that anything that involves yarn is knitting back when you used to crochet a lot everybody would come are you knitting no yep. knitting Two needles, dooby dooby dooby. Yep. Crocheting what? one hook. And this is Tunisian crochet, and it has all the instructions for t Tunisian crochet or how to do it. And then over here, down here, this has some tatting needles, which I don't quite understand why it has tatting needles, but hey, it's still a cool, super cool cup, and it was super nice of her to send the Thank cup you, to Barbara. me. Thank you, Barb. And um, she does a Zoom every month, and um, she was very kind and let me host that for her so that we could all get together and support each other. She and does blog every day, and I yeah. check on her to say how Barbara's doing today, because usually it's up by 10 o'clock, mm, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes later, but if I haven't heard anything about Barbara by lunchtime, I'm assuming that we need to give her a hug. Hey! Are you awake? Are you okay? Everything okay? Yeah. yeah. Did your dog eat your computer? What's your excuse? Where the hell are you? <laughs> so, um, and then I also wanted to give a shout out to, um, Susie. Susie is, uh, has a podcast. It's, I'm going to mess it up. I'll put it down below, but she's in Vegas and I really, really have been enjoying hers. There's a whole bunch of them. What's Vince's? I'll keep trying oh arctic crafts by benta and um that's her podcast and that's also um her yarn on etsy's arctic crafts by benta oh the one girl that you had me watch that piles everything on her head oh she hasn't done it in so long i miss her so much what's um, her name you had me I, I had to add it to my youtube channel see okay so this good. is something that y'all can do for people with youtube channels that are your friends or that you think might be your friends if you like them and you want to support them, you can put your video on and play their, you go to their channel, subscribe, 
and they're just putting them on autoplay and let them run and let the play ads all run. their videos let, all day long run their videos all day long let all the ads play because they get paid for the ads now you don't have to sit there and listen to this crap all day long you can play risk if you don't have pogo I, I got rid of my Pogo because they pissed me off with all their crappy games. And then they came out with Risk. But my sister lets me play on her Pogo because I help her with their badges. So I have been playing Risk on her Pogo. I like it. But point is, you can do anything else while all of these Pogo podcasts are running. And you're helping these people generate income. And you can read a book. You can watch something else. You can do anything. Every once in a while, you need to go house. back and look at it and say, yes, I'm still here. Oh, I wouldn't want to miss it. Click, click, click. Yeah, every once in a while I got to check on it, see if it's paused or whatever. See if I YouTube dropped it. I go through and I like them. If I haven't liked it yet, old, old, old ones, I don't mind. So, you know, do hook a, hook a brother up was the old saying back in the 80s. Hook a brother up. Uh, go and watch their videos. Don't watch their videos. Just let them play whatever. Uh, and, and people you like, look for them on Google. Because I... I and one of the top 10% of Google's restaurant reviewers. Believe it or not. Yes, I am. I forget what the count is. There's over 3 million people that have read whatever the hell I got to say about restaurants. I, my sister and I went to a Chinese restaurant, uh, All You Can Eat Buffet in Yuma. I would rate it as adequate at best. But everything... Everything was too salty, but that could be me because I've discovered I, I've become more sensitive to salt. That's a shame because I love salt. But uh, everything there was salty. The, the they didn't have they have one uh, sushi that actually had sushi. Now, if you think that artificial crab and rice is sushi, you're wrong. Sushi means raw fish. If there is no raw fish in it, it is not sushi. It I is crap. Anyway, Therefore, can we? But I don't think they didn't even I get took pictures, and I got a, a email, a text, or whatever from Google, a notification from Google. Uh, two days later, ninety-four people have re viewed your review and your photos. Wow. That's all I can say. Wow. So if you got nothing else better to do. You can go to Google and follow me, and you'll find out about restaurants all over the place and who's good and who's bad. But see, people love my restaurant reviews because I tell them straight up. I will, I'm not friends with these people. I'll tell you, if it's the food good, is the service good? Is the restaurant clean? If it is, you're going to get good marks. If it's not, I'm going to tell the truth. The uh, Denny's, the closest Denny's to us, brand new Denny's. New dude opened it up. He's got a Denny's and a Burger King. Same building. Yeah. <laughs> he owns them both. Uh, last year for my breakfast, grand, my free birthday breakfast, which I got my thing in the, the mail. My birthday is the ninth, so April is a good month for me because I get all kinds of stuff from people. Happy birthday, happy birthday. See this hair? This hair? i all going to be gone probably next time you see me because sports clips sent me my thing that says happy birthday james here's five dollars off an mvp and my wife told me two days ago you need to go to sports clips and get an mvp i'm going to do what my wife says because she wants me to go to sports clip and get an mvp she said you don't really have to get your haircut just let them do the massage and the head thing i said no no so next time you see me completely different cat's going to be talking to you it's still me. Just going to look. All right. Different. We're going to end it there. Yes, dear. Thank you all for watching. Sorry we talked so much. but I'm, no, <laughs> no, we're not. That's the whole point of this is to talk to people and to visit with people this and to enlighten true. people with the wisdom that we have gathered after almost 60 years of walking yes, this but planet. It's an hour and eight minutes. Yes, and they can take it in bite sized chunks so they can sit down. This is and, true. Watch at your own pleasure. What, what do they call it? it? Binge. You can sit down and watch this for a whole hour and binge, Jim. <laughs> yeah, Jim's boost. Right. Bye, y'all. Bye.